So, okay, so today I'm going to be having a look at uh, some of the parts of my hi-fi as it's right now. So I'm starting to build a proper uh, hi-fi like setup with uh, right in the center. That's the uh, micro setup. So basically, I just use that as an amplifier. I'm not really interested in the radio part of it, as I could just listen to internet radio to my computer. Uh, yeah, and of course the DVD player doesn't work, but that also doesn't matter because there's already a drive in my computer, DVD drive. Uh, yeah, MCD 708 micro set. Uh, below that is the cassette deck. A A Yamaha KX260 cassette deck. So I bought on a second hand shop for 22 euros and 50 cents. Uh, and it's a pretty good one. You might think of cassettes as sounding quite terrible, but in this sec, uh, cassettes I have dined. Uh, cassettes are also really quite cheap. I've got both of these cassettes for about 25 euro cents. Yeah, that. Is of course much cheaper than you can get a final racket, of course. And in addition, uh, you can just record on any cassette. You can also record on the blanks, which I don't have right now, but I really wish to get as well. well. Let's move a little bit to the top to the turntable. Right there, you can see PSJ20. That one seems to cost zero euros to me. Because it was at the TV, of, uh, well, I mean, next to the TV there. And, uh, yeah, it still works fine. Other than the fact that the stylus, which reads the record, was a bit uh, broken. The, the stylus completely broke off. So I had to buy a new one for 70 euros, 17 euros or something like that, just for the new. I couldn't imagine how much the turntable itself has cost back when it was new it, it, it certainly would have been more than the cassette deck as a second hand and even second hand turntables can get quite expensive uh, yeah so that's that the reason I do both vinyl and cassettes and I want to find of course that on cassettes you, you can record on them with vinyl that's pretty much impossible you see limited to Whatever there is on the market now, well, sort of cassette, you can take a blank or even a pre-recorded one, but you don't mind narrating. You just put it in the cassette deck. Uh, in the case of pre-recorded tapes, you would of course have to uh, remove uh, uh, cover of the uh, right protector notches on both sides or on one side, also possible. But. Yeah, but you can just record whatever you want on it, which includes your own voice. Uh, yeah, that's... Well, the fact that you're limited to whatever's on market now with vinyl is not necessarily true, because believe me, there are still people out there who make vinyl records today, because, uh, yeah, analogue media vinyl records, cassette actually get a bit of a comeback and I can sort of understand why uh, there are actually so many videos about even about cassette why it made a comeback uh, I know some videos from Tecmo from V Westlife and before I forget the speakers are from the right there and there as well there's another one uh, they are from the new Microsoft I bought some time ago. You can see a vlog on that as well. It was an MCD395, also made by Philips. And it's a bit of an odd twin because we've got speakers from the 395 with a Microsoft 708. And the opposite downstairs with the TV as well. The speakers of the 708 go with the 395 just fine. And that rhyme, and that as well. Now, of course, right there, these are my uh, records. Or at least they're not mine. They're, they're my mother's records that I just got some out of. And put inside this 
crate that we've got for some time. Uh, now, I mean, so many albums, and even this one's from Mozart, for example, has five LPs there. Five LPs are there from Mozart. Uh, yeah, there are quite so many. Uh, this, for example, uh, Sade uh, Promise. Uh, Sade, uh, I guess it's starting off again with vinyl, and I mean, there's so many Melanie. Uh, Nick Gauss. But the first record I ever played was this one from Edith uh, Pia. Uh, and the only single we have as of right now is this one from Bay King. But again, uh, vinyl records can be very cheap in second hand markets and also in. Uh, Racket shops as well, we have both of these quite often near us, near our house. Now, as you might tell, I, I might have told earlier on, uh, this device has two outputs. Yeah, I have three uh, devices, so I don't even have a switch box. So I have a two outputs, and uh, yeah. Camera a little bit. There are two outputs, or uh, oh God, two outputs there. That's the connections that go to the speakers. That's the control power there. That's the speaker cables. And there's the auxiliary inputs. There are two of them. But I have three devices, so I don't have a switch box right now. So the only way to solve it is simply to swap out the cables uh, <laughs> to plug in another device and just like that now I'm closing my cassette deck that also means that I want to record something I really have to do is to plug it into the input on the cassette deck and then plug the output into the amplifier of the micro set there okay so for those who don't believe cassettes can sound good. So, so that is a bit of a stigma about cassettes going on in the early noughties and the early 2010s. That they sound terrible, they uh, always get stuck inside a machine. But I have to keep in mind, back then, the cassette was primarily used in cars. But I'm going to put in a cassette that I've recorded myself on this deck. Uh, as you can see it's type 1, uh, some people explain but a type 1 tape right there it has a bit of a brownish colour. I can't tell you any type 2, type 3 type I sold these are black. Now it's also pre-recorded but on the black you can also look at the top of the cassette to see what type it is. So it's just a right protect notch of air. That's currently taped off because I'm recording on this cassette. We're recording over it. Right next to that would be another hole on blank uh, chrome tape and in the centre two holes from metal. But how can you tell without those holes? Because this is a pre record I want to re record. Well, I'd have a look at the tape itself. It's a bit of a co coffee colour, which means that this is a type 1 or tape which uses iron dioxide or ferric dioxide. And yeah, that is the worst of the worst cassette you can get. Uh, type 2 is, uses chromium dioxide and it uh, works a bit better. It's a bit more reliable and has a bit better quality. But then you have type 4 tapes and type 4 tapes are metal tapes which is truly the best of the best you can get today. You know? I only have a single pre-recorded type 1 tape, uh, which I re-recorded over. Well, if you're not a f***ing idiot in counting, you might notice we have skipped 3. It is 1, 2, 4. Not 1, 2, 3, 4. Why? Well, not because the counters at Philips are f***ing idiots. Well, why then? Because size 3 was a combination of ferric and the chrome tape. 
which didn't work out at all. It, it was a massive flop for it, so they dropped that one. In fact, many new cassette decks can't play uh, Type 3. Okay, so of course, now it's time to uh, listen to a tape without any form of noise reduction. It's a Type 1. And just to have a listen to how well it sounds. Now, I might have to do, uh, have a look for some copy right free, something that doesn't throw up a YouTube copy strike, but there's something pretty interesting, pretty handy that allows me to select tracks recording intro scans on many newer cassette decks and some portable walkman as well, as far as I know. Uh, yeah, let's just seek through. Seeking, seeking, that's going to take some time, it's not instant access, but that's the charm of Cassette. Bit of a charm that brings me back to some early childhood memories. Uh, yeah, back when my aunt, uh, one of my aunts, we had a tape deck, and that tape deck was, uh, it's not a bad one, it's a portable tape deck, and I just put in a tape and played it. It was so much joy. So here's just a Oh, hey, rewind. That's a bit of a problem with this particular deck. Uh, yeah, but it's sometimes fast forwards or rewinds it all in. And then I have to manually find out where I started because there's, uh, there is a tape counter on this right there, but it doesn't work. I don't know. I've got a bell, some tape counters has snapped. Now, of course, I can't tell you. Uh, how good but it turns out that's because remember there's no copyright free vinyl I can't create my own vinyl records they're only made at special factories but I can tell you I can describe the effect it's, it's a bit again a bit nostalgic from it just feels like I'm in a time I never was with a record on and yeah that Record, <laughs> it's a bit magical the moment when I drop down the needle and let the record go. Well, I don't, sometimes the record skips. I have to make sure they're clean as well, which my mummy actually has this little brush right there. And the needle, I bought this clean tip. Uh, so I've had to censor that out. I'm not affiliated. This is something that I use. This clean tip needle brush that I use to clean off the uh, needle of a vinyl record player turntable. So that's that. So if you can't see me at all, but this is about all about analog, but. There's also a digital component, which is of course my computer, which I connected through a simple little half millimeter to uh, RCA. Okay, there's a bit of a wording on RCA. There's terminology problems there because in America we call it RCA, which stands for Radio Corporation of America, and in the Netherlands we call this type of connector tulip sticker which could translate to English as tulip blood, but <laughs> what does one have a half of tree lift? <laughs> anyway, in other countries, in English, it is, in the UK at least, it's translated in tinch. Uh, for rather not at all obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, chinch which must be spelled with a C and not C-H because otherwise of course it, uh, I mean with C-H and not C because otherwise you're getting uh, tin uh, sorry cinch or kinch but not tinch uh, yeah so that's that little bit of terminology done of course the primary of five millimeter jack is typically called headphone jack and that's it uh, yeah that's that for today. Oh, and one more thing before I sign off. Uh, yeah, 
uh, this about those cheap turntable type of PSJ 20s from Sony. It's one of those turntables that doesn't fully accommodate the racket, and yet it plays the racket just fine. So, for those f***ing idiots who think Crossley Cruises are beat out <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a bit, that's very laughable because, uh, yeah. One of the problems they quote that the racket doesn't really fit on the turntable. If that racket doesn't accommodate, it's not a turntable, it's a toy. That is uh, a f***ing lie. Yeah, a lie, mate, of course. Because, uh, yeah, that can play the 12 inches fine as well. In fact, the smallest turntable in the world, made by Sony, I don't know the correct wording, but it couldn't hold a vinyl racket in its entirety, even a single. And yet they played fine. Uh, even the LP rackets. Now, of course, another thing I have to notice is that the turntable only does 33 uh, RPM for LPs and 45 RPM from singles. Uh, there's no it's a push button 33 or 45. Some have a slide or rotary that you would select 33, 45 or 78 with. Now, 78 RPM is a very rare uh, speed. At least it's relatively common compared to 33 and 45. And some modern turntables, including Crossley Cruises, can play old uh, 78 records with a special size. Now, of Mummy's Records collection, no 78 RPM to have survived to this day. Because she wasn't very careful with vinyl. Uh, sometimes something would fall on them, causing them to break. But yeah, I'm much more careful since I could afford one day, uh, of course, if my turntable could play 78, uh, I would have bought some, be able to buy some 78 rackets. But now I can't because my turntable can't play 78 properly. Uh, <coughs> Now, of course, to play 78, you don't just need the 78 speed on your turntable, you just need a uh, larger uh, needle or stylus. Because remember, the, the ultra thin grooves off a uh, conventional 33 RPM LP or album or a seven, uh, 45 single are nothing compared to the thicker grooves of a 78. And I need a special needle because otherwise the needle's gonna sit in too deeply and cause a lot of noise and possibly be broken as well. In fact, that is the whole point of old grammar fights, uh, in which you had a way too small steel needle or stylus which had to be replaced with every single play for that very reason. And of course, every time the record, you play a record, it's going to melt away a little bit of vinyl. And that's going to cause that sort of warm sound to it. And that isn't reproducible digitally. Okay, so I